was it just me or was it like the longest two weeks ever waiting on my ladies from Married to Medicine? <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Married to Medicine. This is season seven, episode 10. And yes, last week, the ladies didn't come on. And it seemed like the longest 14 days ever. But they're back. And like I said, this is season seven. This is episode 10 of Married to Medicine. I'm excited. Can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay, so y'all know how I feel about Married to Medicine. I love it, child. I'm so here for it. And when I wait all the months that we wait for them to film and then they come back, I don't need no extra weeks off and all of that. Bring my ladies up on here. Let me fuss and complain and scream and yell and go crazy like I do. Don't be making me wait no two weeks. Anyway, listen. Bravo, Andy, you listening? Okay. All right. So we're going to start off with Toya and Eugene actually invited Simone, Cecil, and Miles, because you know, Miles is grown now, for the most part. <laughs> they invited them over for dinner. And they, this was like their first time in. So they got the whole house tour and they actually had dinner. Listen, that house. Maybe that house is a dream. You hear me? We really got to see the whole inside. Not the whole inside, but a lot of the inside of the house. That house is gorgeous. There is no reads to be had. There is nothing that anybody could say. Toya and Eugene, you all have a house. It is beautiful. It really, really is you really you two should be proud of yourself it is really really nice and it'll be nice to see once she gets everything she says she's taking her time with her furniture because and and i i agree with a house of that stature you need to take your time and make sure you get the right things to set things off right absolutely gorgeous i have nothing bad to say whatsoever that house is an absolute dream. It really is. And it was immaculate. Just completely immaculate. You can eat off her floors. I said, you go ahead, Toya. Anyway, um, her boys were so happy. Like, they were loving hanging out with Miles. I was laughing. I said, that's like the most calm that I think I've ever seen them. And the funny part was Miles fit in right with them. And I ain't trying to read you, Miles, but you seem like you were just as happy to be hanging out with them as they were to be hanging out with you. That says a whole lot. <laughs> this is why your mama still was sure. <laughs> but it was cute. They were cute. He was cute running around with them, and they was cute running around with him. I said, look at them, child. They said his old ass outside to eat with them, child. Well, no, they wanted to eat outside, but the adults ate outside. They sent them in the house. He had to sit at the little kid's table. And he should have. He should have. He was right at home with him. I just cracked up laughing. Now, Simone's younger son probably would have been like, child, I don't feel like babysitting these three. You know, is that old, you know, that older, that youngest one has literally been, he, that was a little old grown man. Hey, I said, if y'all don't give him a newspaper and a cup of coffee, honey, hilarious. I love him. You know, I, I do. I love uh, Simone, Cecil, and their family. Anyway. So they're sitting out there and they get to talking about the couple's trip. So we're back to the way things used to be. Cecil and Simone are actually doing the couple's trip. This is their, you know, always goes, it's built around their uh, anniversary. This is their 23rd anniversary. And um, thank God we are in a better place than they were on the 22nd and the 21st. <laughs> listen but anyway they decided to go to Cabo I said oh this is going to be interesting that's going to be really pretty and um, then the conversation started see I got all the nice stuff out the way I got all the nice stuff out the way that I had to say about Eugene and Toya now let's 
Let's talk. The conversation got started. Toya and Eugene's bitch ass. The two of them. You know. Don't, don't try to act like... We were off for two weeks, but don't try to act like I didn't switch and I didn't change. Grimace and the Hamburglar sat over there and they literally are completely against Quad's attendance for the trip. Simone and Cecil are very stern and double down. Says she's going. Period. So poke, poke the fry guys that she's going. She is a part of this group. She is going through a divorce, but we ain't throwing her away, and we not letting you write her off. You got that? Now give us some more of these ribs and things in your beautiful house and cut the bull crap. I was like, oh, y'all are a mess, and, but that they are. You know, listen, and you know Grimace is just as messy as the Hamburglar. You know that, right? I said, oh, yeah, you back. So am I. Let's go, honey. Anyway. All right. So next, Jackie was talking to Quad, and she talked a little bit to Heavenly. She was on her phone while she was driving, and she was talking about, you know, uh, how everything was so nice. for Quad's book release and all of that, as she was excited about hers. She is pretty much done, and she's ready to do her release party for her book. And I was like, okay, so she's really excited about it. And again, everybody's like, of course, she will be there. She will be there. Now, Jackie's book is really, I actually think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea, and I think that uh, it's definitely, it really is about women. It's a book that's written about and for women, but um, if a man decides to read it, it ain't going to hurt him. It's not going to hurt him, and you will probably walk away with a, a lot of knowledge about things that you don't need to know, but there will probably be some things that you could benefit from so everybody get the book child everybody get it but anyway the book is really about vaginal love care and appreciation and i say that very loosely love care and the appreciation of the vagina okay the vajayj is getting its own book hey i'm here for it i ain't got one but Sounds very interesting. So, you know, again, like I said, that little appreciation piece, you guys can benefit from that. Everybody buy Jackie's book here. Just like you bought the cookbook. Because serve some folks that ain't get ready to cook nothing. Buy Quad's cookbook anyway. Because she tells stories in her cookbook. And it's not all just recipes. There's things to learn and you'll get to know her better. By reading the book. So everybody buy Quad's book. Everybody buy Jackie's book. Y'all got that? Let's move on. Okay, so Scott and Contessa, they go for their first therapy session. And I'm glad. I'm like, as I kept saying, when are we going to finally start therapy, you two? Because you need it. You need it. And thank God y'all both are on board. And, you know, because it makes it very hard when there's a married couple and one's fighting and one really don't want to go to counselor council or one's not taking it serious they both have agreed that they actually need it so they went and uh scott's phone rang scott's a doctor contessa's a doctor she understands of course she made him out out of a molehill but again that's for camera time i hope that was for camera time. it probably would contessa you've been acting a damn fool so it probably really wasn't about just for camera time she got an attitude but um the, the therapist they had, she was cool. And she says, you know what? Let's get to some of the quick ones. What do you want out of this? That uh, is actually achievable without a lot of hard thought and process. And she said, a hug. 
a hug. And he said statements that are not, you know, th that are non-judgmental, you know. And I said, oof, I ain't even in their house. And I'm just sitting here watching. And I have seen that, that, Scott, you are distant from Contessa. You know, you, you, you just kind of pop off and go do your own thing. You'd be like running away from her. And she is judgmental, so I can see why you'd run away from her. And she's so full of resentment. You know, it's it's not nice, Contessa. You come across as a real live bitch. And that's and don't a man want to be sitting up underneath that and then he's locked to you with a ring and some paperwork and some kids. Yeah, that's why he'd be running away from you, sis. But I said, yeah. I said, so they are both guilty of the things that they actually threw up there. And both of those things, those things are things they can control and it could, shouldn't be too, too hard. But when she was, said, I'm going to get you, Scott. I'm going to get you. Just hold on. She was explaining how she kind of feels like he don't be wanting to be bothered and like he just disregards her and that kind of thing. And she was actually tearing up. Now, we know because that's just kind of tough. So she don't really tear up much. And I watched you, Scott. Your body language didn't change when your wife was literally sitting next to you and she started crying. Eventually, you grabbed her hand. But uh-uh, Scott, you losing your mind, man? She's sitting over there crying. The woman who doesn't cry, she says she feels unimportant. Is what That was her statement. She feels unimportant, unimportant to you. To you. And she tears up. The woman that doesn't cry. And you still sitting there? You gotta be kidding me. I said, hmm. And I just kept watching. And I was starting to get the tap in my foot a little bit. And then he said, okay, come on. I'm going to hug you for a couple minutes. Yeah, you think? Very good, Scott. You was trying my patience, man. You know I like you, but you tripping. So I was like, oof, yeah, y'all really got to get it together. And I mean quickly. Because, you know, they're like my second favorite couple on the show. I, I like me some Scott and Contessa. Anyway, so, all right. So let's go on over to Jackie's book party. They were really getting to it in this episode. We were moving along and there wasn't a whole lot of stuff just thrown out there. We were like getting to the events and getting to the bull crap, okay? So listen, Jackie's book party, everybody dressed in what she was calling vaginal. It had a vaginal pink dress coat. I thought it was cute. I really did. I thought it was cute. I thought it was cool. The fact that she's speaking freely and openly about the vagina and I mean for everybody like they're just speaking freely and openly it was kind of refreshing because you know Jackie's like a stick in the mud they're always after about being so stuck you know and she was just really talking that coochie talk like it was just normal everyday talk I was just cracking up laughing but anyway listen the book is actually called The Queen V and now you know I got my own books Y'all know that I didn't did advertisement for everybody else on here. Here's a shameless plug for mine. James has five books on the market, okay? All my stuff is over there at Amazon.com as well. So you can go and buy my five books too while you're buying Quads and Dr. Jackie's. But anyway, um, I did my own covers. Like I designed my own covers and stuff for my books as well. Jackie's cover for her book is bad to the bone. Do you hear me? When they flipped that up there and it had the real big V on it and Jackie's, I looked at, I don't think I've ever seen Jackie look better. That book cover is everything. I was like, okay. I was impressed. Whoever did it, they, they really got it together. I love that book cover. That book cover was bad to the bone. Anyway, so that was that. All right, so let's just talk about what's going on at this here, this little party. So listen, Quad gets there, and like first person she sees, she sees Toya and Simone, of course, because the last time she seen them was at her birthday party, and they left early. 
Well, it was a birthday party and a book release thing. But they left early. You remember that? So I was like, oh, God, here we go. We're not getting ready to show out at the function, are we? Because you know they always do. Show out at the function. That's when they see each other. It ain't like they see each other every day. But that's when they get down, honey, and they get to act in a fool. And I was like, come on, call. What you get ready to do? But she took the complete high road and was like, they ran out. I didn't speak fast enough at my event. And they got pissed and they ran out. But I ain't going to play this game with them. I'm not getting ready to play it at all. I'm here about vagina, and we're going to act pink. That's what we're going to do. I ain't doing all that with them. We're going to act vagina. We're not going to act the ass, okay? So that's that. <laughs> that's pretty good. Anyway, I was right off the top of my head. Anyway, um, it could have came off real crude, but I think that was pretty good. Anyway, but that was that. And she just took the high road and everybody just acted like nothing happened. And that was cool. Now, that was cool for now, but I know y'all. So this ain't probably, this is probably not the last time we're going to hear of it. But it was cool for this because this was what it was. Okay. So then, um, Heavenly, Lord Heavenly, Heavenly <laughs> had this confessional. Where when Mariah came in, Mariah had on hot pink. She had this fuchsia suit on, okay? And it was loud. It really was loud. I was like, okay. And I damn heavily going to say in her confessional, yeah, see, Mariah probably wore that old fuchsia, that old hot pink, because she probably has an infection. I s <laughs> Heavenly, you were just so out of order <laughs> on so many levels. Anyway, I fell out laughing, and it's all out of order, but whatever. So, okay, listen. So, Jackie is giving a speech. She always gives a speech. She's giving her speech, and old Jackie, she was talking about the importance of women being able to speak amongst themselves and being able to share things that you wouldn't normally share because when it happens, you basically end up running into situations where there's you're not by yourself. And that's not just women, that's just in general. That's just life, that's a life lesson. If you're not so guarded and so sheltered, you will find out that you are not there. There's a whole lot of us, you know, walking around on the planet, but there's a lot of us and a lot of us go through the same things. And if you open up a little bit, you'll find out you're not alone. And that was what that whole thing was about. Toy actually was doing a little confessional, uh, a little confessional splice in about her miscarriage. Okay. So, in the midst of the speech, Jackie was talking about the fact that she can't have children due to the breast cancer fight that she went through. And then she says, Buffy, you understand what I'm talking about. And it was like, ooh, ooh. And then you start seeing people say, did she just tell everybody in this room about her infertility? And they're like, yeah, pretty much, pretty much. And at first, I mean, it was one of those things where it's touchy for, it's very touchy for Buffy. But at first, I don't think Buffy, I didn't feel like Buffy got really bent out of shape with Jackie. I think just the whole topic of it, period, makes her uneasy and it makes her sad because she just, because Jackie too. Those are, th that is the one thing that can break Jackie in the tears. Jackie does pretty good with holding it together, but Jackie wants a baby. She, you know, there's some people that long for things and you just can't have it. So there ain't nothing you can do but cry. And that's one of them things. Buffy, same thing. Buffy's pretty tough. But that baby thing will bring her down. And then she said that. And then dig what took place after that. It showed you who's who in the room. Quad went over and consoled Buffy. 
after the speech was over and all of that, she went to Buffy and consoled Buffy. There was a lot of this. Oh, girl, she was so old. Did she? Uh, oh, Jackie. Now, Jackie was out of order. But that was Lake Mariah Toya. The messy bunch. The messy bunch were doing what they do best. Being messy. Being messy. Talk about they can't believe Jackie said that. How could she say that? And they literally, I seen Lake. Lake, you are not one of the, the, the ladies that's on this show. We don't see you, Frozen Lake. We don't see you when the show comes on. You're not part of the song in the beginning, Effa. Why we see you over there talking to Buffy's husband about what Jackie said. Hey, Lake, shut up. Shut up and go find what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Go see if you can get on Black Ink Crew or something. Get on out of here. Just messy as hell. You and Shoot Lucy, I mean, y'all are a mess. Y'all do, y'all act like y'all are really like headliners on this show. Y'all always in the shit. More so than Mariah. I said, look at them. They were scurrying around her like roaches when people turn the lights on. And Toya, you just determined to be a messy bitch. Like you're really trying to fall back into that 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 realm. I don't know why. Because you don't be winning. When you be carrying on like that in the past, you weren't winning. You're always at odds with most of the ladies when you were doing all that. What part are you getting? You're not learning anything, miss. Anyway, but I say to Mariah Frozen Lake and that little party is over there talking to her husband. I said, they a mess. Quad was over there consoling Buffy and telling Buffy, everything going to be fine. You know what I mean? Everything will be fine. And she did. She said, I want, I want a baby, you know, and all of that. I was like, just messy. And what talking to her husband about what? Get out of here. Anyway, so I was like, mm, mm. so you know, we ain't heard the last of that. Now Jackie's gonna be back in the hot seat. How could you? Jackie wasn't being malicious. Um, would I have done that? No. No. Jackie, you was a little chatty, a little chatty Kathy there, but she wasn't being malicious. And Buffy knows she wasn't being malicious. Buffy seemed, once, you know, the chitter-chatter, it seemed like the chitter-chatter is going to sway Miss Buffy's reaction. Because her initial reaction wasn't that of being pissed off with Jackie. Like, you know, having a whole big attitude. But we'll see what goes on. Anyway, I ain't going to jump the gun. We're going to wait and see. So listen, that was pretty much it for the party. Let's talk about the Cabo trip trip because we got right to that. Um, they were, well, no, at the party, they were talking about the Cabo trip. I almost forgot this because this was messy as hell. They were talking about the Cabo trip at the um, party. Everybody's sitting around. And at least messy ass Grimace and Hamburglar said what they had to say to Quad's face this time, and, and it didn't have to come in the form of a message from other people. They said to your face that they didn't want you on the trip. So there's no guesswork. You know at this point who didn't want you on the trip. And I have to say, me personally, me personally, I wouldn't even want to go on a trip with them. I would have been like, you know what? I'm not trying. I, I have an issue about uh, occupying spaces that people don't want me in, to hell with you. Because, see, I'm James Caldwell. And if you don't get to know me, guess what? That is not my loss. If you don't get to enjoy me and my presence, that is not my loss. And see, that's how I live my life. So you don't want me to go on the trip? To hell with you. I don't need to go on the trip with you. Got my own, listen. Got my own everything. My own money, my own way, and everything. Quark can pick up and go to Cabo anytime she wants. 
And she got other groups of friends. See, that's y'all just got done being mad about the other group of friends. And then look how you're acting. Look how you're acting. Toya and Grimace. Nasty. It was nasty. And I mean, because well, when Toya said, side eye on quad on the trip. I was like, wow, isn't that something nice to say? No, I wouldn't want to go nowhere with them. But again, listen, get that money. Because see, the, the bottom line is always green. So, you know, she's being paid to go. So, go on and go. Go on and go. But yeah, on a regular, just a regular, no, nah, I don't want to go nowhere with y'all. Even all the other ladies I love, I catch y'all somewhere else y'all going that that hoe ain't going. But I don't want to go nowhere with, with Grimace and the Hamburglar. No thanks. But listen, Simone stood over there and owned, because they tried to, Ellen Mariah was, you know, she was putting her two cents in. Listen, little Bo Peep, ain't nobody thinking about you because you on barely there, girl, because if you really get down and ask people what they really think, your ass would be on the bottom of the list, too, hanging by your fingernails, honey, because ain't nobody trying to hang with you for real, either. You and A didn't. Not at all. But, um, yeah, they was really pushing it and just really out with it. It just wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. It just wasn't a nice feeling. I was like, that's terrible. But Simone owned everything. They tried to throw back at Simone what she said. Simone owned it. She said, yeah, I was wrong. I was wrong. At first, last last year, I was wrong. I had that same stupid way of thinking, and I was wrong. She proved me completely wrong. She went on the trip, had a great time. She wasn't groveling. She wasn't in nobody's way. And the only way we knew she wasn't there as a couple was because we knew, because she surely wasn't an issue for anyone. And I was wrong. As she stood 10 toes down in the sand, baby, listen, she's going, period. Got it? Okay. And that was the end of it. I said, come on through, Simone. That's the Simone I like. I don't give a goddamn what you're saying. And you can try to throw back in my face whatever I said. I can retract it because I'm the bitch that said it. I said, come on, Simone. Anyway, so then they get ready for the trip. Contessa, you knew we couldn't get out of here. I'd already smacked Scott on the wrist. You know we couldn't get out of here with me, without me smacking you on your wrist. What you leave your man down at that damn TSA for? Who does that? See, it's the little stuff. It's that little stuff. Did you think for one moment that might have hurt his feelings? It would have hurt mine. Because you got, you you could get straight through and he had to stand in the line and you didn't, what would hurt you to go over there and finish and sit down on the bench and wait on him to come through the line? You left him and went all the way to the gate. Out of order, sis. Out of order. If y'all were where y'all weren't having any problems, I probably wouldn't have said anything. But you are having problems. You are the one who sat on the couch across from the therapist and said you felt unimportant. How do you think he felt coming through the uh, TSA line by himself? You didn't have to go through the express line. You could have stood in the other line with him and talked to him while y'all go through TSA together. Did y'all come together? Is it a couple's trip? How's it supposed to be a successful couple's trip and you'd have left the man at the damn TSA? You'd have separated yourself out before you even get on the plane. Out of order. <sighs> anyway, moving on. She know better than that. Okay, so when they get there, they said one couple is going to get to have a penthouse suite. And they had a dance off for the penthouse suite. Lord have mercy. And they got up and danced. And everybody, Jackie and Curtis didn't dance. Um, Toya and Eugene didn't dance. They just sat back there. And, you know, they instigators. So that's exactly what they did. The Hamburglar and the and Grimace sat back there and acted a mess. Quad just 
blended into the background and, and just left it alone, which was smart because they don't need to get that started. Aiden can't even buy any soul, so they just sat down. So the only ones who actually danced was Contessa and Scott, and it was against Lord have mercy. Oh, no, yeah, Contessa and Scott and Buffy and her husband, and then there was Dr. Damon and Heavenly. And Heavenly's like, oh, that's all right, Daddy. I got it, I got it, Daddy. And she did not. The Damon is why they won. They ended up winning. And it was because of Damon. Because Damon decided, honestly, Dr. Damon did not just stand up on his damn head. He did a headstand. I said, child, y'all might as well give it to him because he damn near broke his neck. Put all that meat up on that damn neck. I said, Lord, have that little bit of neck he got. I said, boy, you better quit. I bet I wouldn't have got up on my head, honey, because I know better. But we were laughing when they were doing uh, Scott and, and Contessa. They was doing their little thing, honey. They was busting it down. Just said, remember, he used to be a rapper. Child, they going to show this old picture of us. I said, well, go ahead, Scott. He got up. They're going to say, child, he got his Ben Gay and everything else out there. I said, he going to need it and some Ambisol and everything else. <laughs> they was on there doing a little caterpillar thing on the floor. I said, boy, you're going to be hurting in the mountain. You're going to be hurting. But yeah, it was good. And that was where we actually broke out from here. So ain't nothing really got started yet, but it's going to get started. Ain't Mariah and Aiden there? Ain't Grimace and the Hamburglar there? There going to be some shit. Yep. And Quaz there? And they, they didn't want her there? Yeah, there going to be some shit. Anyway, but um, it's going to take a different turn. It's going to be something different like we ain't never seen. Oh, Miss Jackie, keep your eye, your good eye on Miss Jackie. That's all.